Sure, some people say interacting with animals is good for our health. I'm sorry to break it to you, but it really doesn't apply to all creatures. Just to be sure you're safe, let's take a look at some you should steer clear of, especially their kisses. Not that you'd like touching worms anytime soon, but do stay away from ribbon worms. They're easy to spot because these long, thin creatures are often brightly colored. You'll see some of them in oceans, while other species can also live on land. Ribbon worms have a unique feature called a proboscis, which is a long, thin tube that they use to capture and eat their prey. They're often very flexible and can stretch out to catch their food or wrap around objects. Some ribbon worms are also venomous, often sneaking harmful substances into their prey. More so, they can also secrete a slime that can be irritating to the skin. Let's also look at the cone snail for a bit. This one lives in the ocean, usually in warm and shallow waters near coral reefs. It can be found in many different colors and patterns and uses its long pointed shell to hide and protect itself. It also has a long pointed tongue, which can be quite dangerous. It's called a radula and the snail uses it to catch its prey. Inside its tongue, there are tiny sharp teeth. When the cone snail sees a fish or other small animal, it shoots out its tongue and injects its harpoons into its prey. These harpoons are covered in venom, which can make the prey very sick. The venom can also be harmful to humans, so it's important to be careful around cone snails. Humans and lampreys have had quite a complicated relationship over the years. In case you haven't heard of them, they are eel-like fish that are known for this unusual feature, tube-shaped mouths with scary teeth. They are parasites that attach themselves to other fish and feed on their blood and tissues. You'll find them in both fresh and salt water. Despite the terrifying way they look, people have eaten them for a long time. Some rich and powerful people in the past, like kings and emperors, enjoyed having them for dinner as a delicacy. There's even a story about a king who ate so many lampreys that he eventually kicked the proverbial bucket. Tasty as they may seem for some, they are quite dangerous. They can cause trouble for people because they can attach themselves to the skin and use their sharp teeth to feed on their host's blood and tissue. This is what earned it the nickname vampire fish. Lampreys can cause severe damage to their host because of things like infection or loss of blood. More so, the wounds they cause can be difficult to heal and may leave scarring. Lampreys may not be your dream fish, but they do look like beauty pageant contestants next to the hagfish. A hagfish is also a slimy, eel-like fish that lives in the ocean. It has a long, slippery body and no scales. Instead, it has a layer of slime that it can release to protect itself from predators or to help it move through the water. Hagfish are scavengers and will eat expired animals that they find in the ocean. Thankfully, they're not known to attack or harm humans, but you should steer clear of these pesky mouths of theirs. That's because they can carry a lot of harmful bacteria, seeing as they don't eat from the fresh produce aisle, if you know what I mean. They can be a problem for divers or fishermen because they can give off a slime that can clog fishing nets and make the water difficult to see in. Because they often feast themselves from the ocean's trash cans, they can smell pretty bad too. A fish that's dubbed the cookie cutter shark? Might seem cute when you first hear about them, but these creatures can be quite dangerous. They are small fish that got their name because of the unique way they eat food. These creatures feature a small circular shaped mouth that comes with a terrifying set of teeth. They allow the shark to cut out round pieces directly from their prey, just like a cookie cutter leaves an imprint on a piece of dough. You'll find them in tropical waters around the world, and what's even more dangerous is that they often swim near the surface of the water. So people are more likely to get into contact with these fish when surfing or swimming. Ever heard of a trash panda? Well, if you haven't heard of it before, this is actually a nickname for the naughty raccoon. They're small furry animals with black and white markings on their face and bushy tail. These quirky creatures are famous for their mischievous behavior, like raiding trash cans for food. They're often found near forests, 
and are more active at nighttime. Despite their innocent looks, raccoons can be dangerous if they lick you. That's because their saliva can contain harmful bacteria or diseases. It's best to avoid contact with raccoons and to seek help if you've been licked by one, just in case. The odds of you ever encountering the Ohakan salamander are pretty slim. But did you know its tongue is dangerous? Weirdly enough, it's because of its speed. This type of salamander is found in the Oaxaca region of Mexico. It also features a dark brown or black body and bright orange or yellow markings on its arms, legs, and tail. This creature spends most of its time in the trees, where it feeds on insects. It's nocturnal, and when threatened, it can release a nasty substance from its skin to protect itself from predators. However, a new study has found that this giant palm salamander has the most powerful muscle in the animal kingdom. It can shoot out its tongue with so much power that being snapped by it can cause serious damage. It can also extend its tongue more than half its body length in just 7 milliseconds. Geese are pretty common domesticated animals. If you've ever spent some time on a farm, you've encountered these sturdy birds for sure. They might look wobbly, but they can get aggressive to protect their territory and their offspring. It's no surprise some farms even use these birds for protection, mostly because they get easily startled by noise and can alert the owner if something unusual is going on in their yard. Nevertheless, geese can be dangerous if they bite you. Their beaks can cause injury and can also carry bacteria that can lead to many other problems inside your body. It's important to avoid approaching or interacting with geese in a way that may provoke them to bite. The list of animals you shouldn't let lick you doesn't end with wild ones. Let's look at domesticated ones too, like cats. Their tongue is made of small backward-facing spines called papillae, which help them groom themselves and eat. These papillae are made out of keratin, the same protein found in human nails and hair. If you've ever been licked by a cat, you know the sensation. It's like being touched by sandpaper. A cat's rough tongue can cause irritation on any type of skin if used a lot or aggressively. Same goes with dogs. Your dog can have bacteria in its mouth that can cause you some problems. Dogs can get these bacteria by sniffing or eating animal waste or by drinking dirty water. Sometimes, dogs have these bacteria in their bodies but do not look sick, so you might be easily confused into thinking your dog is actually top-notch healthy. If you don't want to have any problems from the stuff in your dog's mouth, avoid letting them lick your mouth or nose, and wash your hands and face after giving them a kiss. If you do, however, have a routine with your dog and can't help yourself to these smooches, kissing your dog on the cheek instead of the lips is a safer option. Allowing your pets to lick you can reinforce unwanted behavior, like begging for food or attention. Some pets may even have allergies that can be passed on to humans through their saliva. Well, meet the tiny terrors of our world. Fire ants. When they sting, they inject venom that can cause serious trouble. For most people, it's just a fiery sensation in raised bumps. But for others, especially those who are allergic to it, it's life-threatening. These ants set up their camps right under your feet. They're quick to swarm and are fiercely protective of their colonies. They show no mercy to intruders. Their stings are rated about 1.2 on the Schmidt Insect Sting Index, where 4 is the maximum. It feels like a sudden jolt, but the sensations are less burning than when a bee stings you. They originated in tropical regions like Central and South America. But now you can find them even in some temperate zones like North America. In their colonies, fire ants have a strict hierarchy – a queen, winged males and females, and different types of workers. They communicate through chemicals and sounds. The most famous member of this genus is the red imported fire ant. They've come from South America and invaded the southern US. They build large mounds, making farming difficult and damaging crops. It's almost impossible to control them. And on top of that, there's now the rise of another invasive species, the tawny crazy ant. This one poses a threat to native ecosystems. Turns out ants can be dangerously unfriendly. 
colorful blister beetles are among the 10 most dangerous insects in the world. Luckily, they're not lethal to humans unless they go for you in a big pack. However, they pose a serious threat to large animals, such as horses. Blister beetles produce a toxin called cantharidin, which causes skin blistering in humans. In the past, people believed it could treat warts and even rabies, and some even used it in love potions. However, it's a risky game. In the 1950s, a man was jailed for giving cantharidin lace candies to two women, resulting in a tragic outcome. These beetles are not to be messed with. Handling them or ingesting them is very dangerous. They're attracted to alfalfa and hay. If a horse eats either of those, even a few beetles can release enough cantharidin to end it. This cute caterpillar from South America is called Linomia obliqua, and it's the most dangerous caterpillar on Earth. It's responsible for several fatalities due to its potent venom. It's the larval stage of the giant silkworm moth. When it grows up, it becomes a beautiful and harmless silkworm. But if you see them as youngsters, it's better to stay away. Its toxicity stems from venom-injecting bristles. They serve as a defense mechanism against predators. The poison messes up how your blood clots and can cause really bad symptoms like burning feelings, throwing up, kidney problems, and sometimes even lethal outcomes. A single bite probably won't lead to anything horrifying. It delivers only a tiny amount of venom. But these caterpillars tend to congregate, and they're quite good at camouflage. This increases the risk of multiple stings. Locusts themselves aren't dangerous to humans. They're ordinary, loud grasshoppers. But they're infamous for their swarming behavior. These swarms often happen when there's a dry period with no rain, and then suddenly, a lot of rain falls and plants start growing fast. Once it begins, it's nearly impossible to stop. They can become a destructive force within minutes. Throughout history, locust plagues have been devastating, wreaking havoc on crops and farmland. What's interesting is that the term locust can mean different things depending on where you're from. In some places, we're talking about cicadas, which are also known for their loud sounds. But true locusts are ancient creatures, relatively unchanged since the Triassic era. They're among the oldest insects on Earth. Wasps, hornets, and even bees can be extremely dangerous, especially to those allergic to their stings. The Asian giant hornet is the largest of the wasps. It can reach up to 2 inches in size. It packs a powerful venom that can cause serious discomfort and even spray into people's eyes. There's an even more venomous species in the Philippines, called Vespa luctuosa. Not to be confused with Expecto Patronum. Any Harry Potter fans? Anyway, fatalities because of wasps or bees are rare, but not unheard of. In the UK, about 10 people pass away each year from bee or wasp sting reactions. Always stay cautious. All these insects are very territorial and will fiercely defend their hives. When provoked, they signal danger to nearby bees and instigate a mass defense effort. If you need to handle them, it's best to call professionals. A flea is tiny and humble, but it left a colossal impact on human history and health. They're not just annoying pests, they're notorious carriers of various human conditions and are responsible for some of the worst outbreaks in history. Back in the 14th century, I forget where I was, but the bubonic plague wiped out over 25 million people in Europe, and fleas were a big part of spreading it. Fleas spend their lives searching for warm-blooded hosts to feed on, whether it's reptiles, mammals, pets, or humans. Despite their tiny size and absence of wings, they make up for it with impressive jumping abilities. They can leap 6 feet and jump over 1,200 feet in the air. A flea bite might seem like a minor annoyance, causing itching and inflammation. But a lot of them can lead to anemia in their hosts. Of course, the most dangerous part about them is the viruses, bacteria, and worms they transmit. Kissing bugs mostly live in both Americas, with smaller populations in Africa and Asia. Despite the friendly name, they're great at passing on bacteria, viruses, and parasites. One of the parasites they carry is Trypanosoma cruzi. It's the culprit behind illnesses that affect millions globally and claim thousands of lives each year. 
What's interesting is that symptoms don't often appear until 10 or 30 years after being bitten. They typically manifest as heart failure, digestive issues, or nervous system problems. They don't actually kiss you, they suck on you and are attracted to their prey by breath. If you breathe through your mouth, you're a target. They're messy biters, often biting chaotically and almost uncontrollably, which only adds to their unsettling nature. Many have heard of the tsetse fly, an unusual and scary insect from tropical Africa. These flies are carriers of one of the most devastating human diseases, sleeping sickness. Similar to the kissing bug, the tsetse fly transmits trypanosomes, the parasites that cause sleeping sickness. They acquire this parasite from an infected host or from within the fly's own body. Sleeping sickness doesn't strike immediately. After a bite, it takes one to three weeks for symptoms to appear – fever, headaches, joint pains, and itchiness. As the illness progresses, it can invade the nervous system, leading to confusion, insomnia, and loss of balance. Without treatment, it can result in a coma and then a fatal outcome. Luckily, sleeping sickness can be treated, and the number of losses is declining. The tsetse fly holds historical significance too. Its presence has hindered European colonial expansion in Africa. And the crown of the most dangerous insect in the world goes to… the mosquito. It's no surprise why. Despite their small size, they wield a massive impact. They're not only responsible for more human losses annually than any other animal, but they've also left an indelible mark on history. These little insects influenced the rise and fall of entire civilizations. For example, malaria significantly weakened ancient civilizations such as in Rome and Greece. What's interesting is that it's not just the mosquitoes themselves that are dangerous, but the parasites. Bacteria and viruses carry and transmit through their bites. These tiny horrors spread a buffet of diseases. Despite malaria, there's also yellow fever, which, just like with the tsetse fly, hindered European colonization efforts in tropical regions. The scariest one of them is the Anopheles mosquito. It's the apex predator of the insect world. It's responsible for more fatal outcomes and illnesses than any other insect. So how do we combat these tiny yet mighty foes? With prevention. We need to eliminate standing water in our surroundings and practice mosquito control measures. We must always stay one step ahead to protect ourselves and our communities from dangerous insects. This tree has poisonous bark, leaves, and even seeds. What's worse, those seeds can even explode. Wow! And that's not the kind of experience you want when traveling around tropical America. Meet Sandbox Tree, a 100-foot giant covered in conical studs. The tree itself looks unique, since the studs look almost like tiny pumpkins. But don't you dare come close and touch them! Mm -mm. Just contemplate it from afar. Once the pumpkin-looking studs crack, they set the notorious seeds free. They travel at about 230 feet per second, and those have enough force to injure you. But hey, the sandbox tree is not that mean. It just doesn't want any competition, and that's why it tries so hard to send the seeds as far as it can, which is about 130 feet. So please, stay out of the way. Some trees are so dangerous they even have a warning sign. For example, a manchineel tree. It pretends to be totally innocent, mm, and its fruits look like regular apples. But eating such an apple can be the last thing you do in your life. Well, that sounds serious. Touching this tree isn't safe either. I mean, even looking at that tree can be dangerous. Not kidding. And people can even banish it. Whoever tries to do that gets punished instantly. You try to cut the tree, it replies by squirting blinding ooze right into your eyes. Yeah, this sap can cause temporary blindness, and if it contacts the skin, you'll get burns and blisters. There's only one way to tame that tree. To do that, people first gotta burn the tree at the base and stand far away for sure. Then the fallen tree is left to dry in the sun. Once it's dry, it's safe to use. There are even used-to-be toxic pieces of furniture made of manchineel tree. Hey, pull up a chair! 
Now, this thing here, scientists call it Jatropha fruit, but it's also known as black vomit nut. Ew! If you ever try to eat it, the first thing you'll experience is a burning feeling in the throat. Once it reaches your stomach, you'll have a severe stomach ache. The result can be terrible. It can cause severe central nervous system depression, and it's not about being terribly sad. It's a physiological state when the breath rate is affected, the heart rate is decreased, and the person may even lose consciousness, not to mention a more serious aftermath. Ah, look at these heart-shaped leaves. They're so cute! Still, this tree's fruit isn't that cute. Pangium eduli is native to Southeast Asia, and its fruit can be eaten, but it requires a lot of preparation. First, you need to grab those brownish clusters that look like pears. These are the fruit. Second, you need to boil the seeds. Yeah, you gotta get to those seeds through the pulp that looks soft, creamy, and possibly edible, but that it's not. Third, you need to either soak them or wrap them in banana leaves for 40 days for the hydrogen cyanide to be released. Yeah, that's great that hydrogen cyanide is slightly water-soluble and can be sort of washed out once the seeds are boiled or fermented. But isn't that too much effort? The thing is, these seeds are usually added to some dishes, so they're more like a spice, not an independent dish. Nope, the hydrogen cyanide thing ruined it for me. Now, some fruits require a lot of additional preparation, while others can be eaten only when 100% ripe. Raw elderberry is rich in vitamin C, which is good for you, and cyanide, which is not that good. These berries are quite popular, though. You can find them in pies, syrups, teas, jams, you name it. Fully ripe and cooked berries aren't dangerous. And nope, these berries aren't banned. National Jamaican fruit aki has a truly unique taste. It's mild and buttery, and people who tried it say it tastes just like scrambled eggs. Just like with elderberries, it's safe to eat aki only as long as it's fully ripe. So the importation of raw aki fruit was banned in the U.S. almost 50 years ago. The only edible part is the white creamy flesh itself. The pink flesh looks mouth-watering, but don't fall for it. It's highly toxic. Same with the black seeds. Well, let's interrupt this for a fun fact. People used to utilize aki fruit for cleaning clothes, thanks to its laundering properties. Thing is, the fruit capsules have saponins that can create that lather we need for washing. Today, it's not that popular, though, and very few people prefer it to manufactured soap. Soursop is one more fruit that doesn't seem to be available in the U.S. It's also referred to as guanabana and can release dangerous toxins, leading to some very unpleasant consequences if not ripe. Soursop fans, don't be sad. Chances are you might find some frozen pulp in supermarkets. The fruit itself is yummy. It tastes like a mix of pineapple and strawberry. However, this fruit is not FDA-approved because of its safety issues. But if you ever eat soursop, remember to avoid the seeds, as they're toxic to us human mammals. Looky here! This is mango. It's safe and delicious. Now look over here. This one kind of looks like mango when it's green, but you certainly don't want to eat it. These fruits grow on a pong pong tree, and one kernel is enough to finish any human being. But who said we gotta eat them? They can be used for deodorants. However, there are safer antibacterial options out there, so we'd best leave the pong pong tree alone. Now, arboreally speaking, a tree doesn't necessarily have to be poisonous to be dangerous. The bunya pine, or false monkey puzzle tree, for instance, has extremely giant cones, larger than your head. Imagine the size of the nuts those cones carry. So the only real danger it poses is if a cone accidentally hits your head when falling. For the rest, the bunya pine is cool. If you boil the seeds, you'll get a super flavorsome tea. The nuts are gluten-free, so they can be part of any trendy diet. It's been around for quite some time, ever since the dinos roamed the planet. But now, it's almost unique to Queensland, Australia. We all know the dose that makes the poison, right? Milky mangrove is another proof of the same. 
it can be extremely useful for medicinal purposes and extremely toxic when used incorrectly. Yeah, it may not only be the dose, but also the science that makes the poison. This tree's sap can cause blisters, burns, and even temporary blindness, just like a mansion eel tree. Ah, here's why people also call it a blind-in-your-eye mangrove. Well, that makes sense. The bottle tree is mostly found in Namibia. So when traveling there and feeling thirsty, don't fall for that bottle-looking buddy. It has no water for you. The bottle tree gets its famous shape by the age of between 5 and 8 years and is designed to hold the water for itself. Now, if you dare try it, the consequences are, shall we say, sad. It's highly toxic for humans and animals. But for those toxins contained in the water, the tree would have been left with no moisture at all. Animals would have taken all the water from it. To avoid it, the bottle tree developed a sort of protection mechanism mostly from animals, and apparently from some humans too, to stay well hydrated. Good advice for everyone! The last, but not the least, Jimpy Jimpy. Now, you probably came across a stinging nettle at least once in your life. The aftermath of the contact with the stinging nettle isn't quite pleasant. Nobody likes rash and burning sensations. Well, it's possible to say that harmless-looking Jimpy Jimpy, which is a distant relative of stinging nettle, has pretty much the same mechanism, but the consequences are different. It can even be fatal. Good news! There's an antidote! Depilatory wax or even sticky tape can help you out. The main problem is the little hair stuck in the skin, and anything sticky, especially wax or tape, can help remove them. This is a first-aid treatment, but it helps a lot.